vitamins, organic molecules. So when you hear the word organic, no, there must be carbon, there must be hydrogen, and there must be oxygen. Okay? Period. Organic molecules. Number two, they are micronutrients. Micro. Macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, protein. Micronutrients, vitamins come in. Most importantly, they must be essential. Why am I saying essential? When you hear in medical terms essential, it means that they are necessary, but your body cannot synthesize them. So therefore, these ones have to come through diets. Those are the three things that you need to understand. Also, from these three things, these three components, you will know why we don't have some types of vitamins, like vitamin B4, B8, B10, and B11. Why do we skip them? You will get to understand that, because they don't qualify the criteria for classification as vitamins. For you to classify it as a vitamin, it must be essential. The body must be unable to synthesize it, and therefore it must come in with the diets. Okay? Now, why do we need vitamins? We need them because, one, our body cannot function without them. That's why they are essential, right? Number two, they act as cofactors and coenzymes. When you hear the word co, just know they are assistants. So your enzymes and your uh, biological uh, catalysts in the body cannot actually work without being assisted by this. Actually, they are, most of them are actually catalysts. So enzymes have to get assistance from these vitamins for them to start functioning clearly. Once you get that, ah, doctor, you've started becoming, okay? Yeah, you don't need the syllabus. You're starting to become a good doctor, and we hope you can practice it. Also, they are antioxidants. Examples is vitamin C and vitamin E. Those are antioxidants. Their role is to clear oxidative stress from the system. For example, people who smoke cigarettes, you've seen them having these discolored teeth and bleeding through the gums because of scurvy. Therefore, vitamin C comes in handy to actually replace that, which tells you somebody who smokes cigarettes can actually benefit from vitamin C as a, uh, as a supplement. Let me use that supplement in quotes. Also, vitamin E, most of you go ahead and do detox and you're using cabbage juice, but you don't know why you're using cabbage juice. Cabbage juice comes with vitamin E. Cabbage juice comes with something called glutathione. Glutathione is one of the amino acids that actually the body uses to detoxify the system. So when you're taking that cabbage juice, and people who are consuming uh, fermented cabbages, you know this better. When you're taking that, you're actually helping the liver to clear out some of these uh, toxins, the reactive oxygen species that are caused by chemicals, that are caused by cigarette smoking, and that are caused by seed oils. Good. Let's continue. They also aid in metabolism. For example, metabolism of glucose, you really need these vitamins. Metabolism of fats, you really need these, these, uh, these vitamins. Also, there are people who are busy taking collagen supplements. Hello? <laughs> Say hi to the, to the public if you are a person who is busy binging on the capsules that are collagen supplements. Vitamin C is one of the vitamins that is very essential in synthesis of collagen. And collagen plays a very important role in hair, plays a very important role in development of the bone, and also in development of the blood vessels. That's why when you have low vitamin C, or you will start having deficiency in collagen, and then you start bleeding from the gums, your blood vessels start bleeding, you bleed from the skin, you will have that curly scare that looks like uh, uh, the feces from a goat. Now you understand, again, development of red blood cells. That's another function of vitamins in the body, and specifically vitamin B9, the one that is called folate. The one that you people take supplements that are called folic acids. Remember, folic acid is not folate. Folic acid is a synthetic vitamin B9. Synthetic means it's synthesized in the laboratories and in the industries. So it's actually coming in as a synthetic product that the body struggles to assimilate. We'll talk about it. The next one is actually vitamin D, which actually plays a role as a hormone for your immunity, for your bone development, for deposition of calcium, and again, as an immune system. So if you have low vitamin D, of course, poor immunity. So those are the functions of the vitamins. And once you've understood those functions, you'll know. If I have this deficiency of this vitamin, I'll end up having uh, these problems, these uh, deficiency symptoms. So we'll be talking about each vitamin. We mentioned the deficiency symptoms. We mentioned the disease and then how, how to cover it by using diets because those are the natural sources of vitamins. 
We don't want the synthetic sources. But we'll use them only when we've gotten to a point that we know you are actually in, in a deep pit and you cannot come out of it. So we can give you the supplements. But if you're still having a healthy system, a functioning system, simply consume natural sources of vitamins and we'll mention them as we go ahead. So vitamins are classified into two groups. We have the fat-soluble vitamins and the water-soluble vitamins. From the word soluble, you will know. Fat-soluble vitamins cannot dissolve in water. Okay? And anything that dissolves in water can easily leave the body through the kidneys because kidneys eliminate water-soluble components. So therefore, water-soluble vitamins can actually leave the body. If you get that point clearly, there's something that I'm trying to, to push. Listen, we have fat-soluble vitamins and the water-soluble vitamins, right? On the water-soluble vitamins, remember all these vitamins are coming in through the diets. Some of them can be stored in the body, some of them cannot be stored in the body. Those things that are soluble in fat, they cannot leave the body through urine which basically tells you they can be stored in the body. That means fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, we call them DECA or ADEC, they are stored in the body. That is very important. They are stored in the body. And since they are stored in the body, chances of them being toxic on extreme levels is high because they are stored in the body. On the other hand, the water-soluble vitamins, anything that is soluble in water, is leave, can leave the body through the kidneys because the function of the kidneys is to excrete water-soluble metabolites or components from the body. So therefore, the water-soluble vitamins actually leave the body through urine. And when they're leaving the body, it tells you they are not stored in the body. Therefore, toxicities of water-soluble vitamins, which are the B vitamins and vitamin C, is very, very rare. Why? Because they cannot build up, they are excreted, unless you have a kidney problem. But for the fat-soluble vitamins, they can easily build up. And that's why vitamin A becomes very toxic on higher doses. That's why it causes abortion in women. And I'm not telling women to go and take vitamin A supplements when they want to abort. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Good. So these are the comparison. Water-soluble and fat-soluble. We will compare them according to storage. Listen, I've just told you, that if it's coming in and it is fat soluble, it will stay in the body. Therefore, storage, these fat soluble vitamins are the ones that are stored in the body. The water soluble vitamins cannot be stored, so they live through the kidneys, except vitamin B12, which is stored for about three years in the body, and vitamin B9, which is stored in the liver for about three to four months. Vitamin B9. Vitamin B9, I am repeating, that is the folate. Folate is not folic acid. Folic acid is the synthetic form of folate. On that note, no, let me hold that thought. I'll talk about it when we get to vitamin B9 as a vitamin on its own. Number two, excretion. Excretion means leaving the body. So therefore, the organ that excretes these vitamins is the kidneys. But I've already told you, when you're comparing the fat-soluble and the water-soluble vitamins... You are looking at which one leaves the body, which are the water-soluble vitamins. So excretion is through urine, the water-soluble vitamins. But for the rest, the fat-soluble vitamins, they are not excreted. Okay? They remain in the body because they are fat-soluble and they are stored in the fat cells or in the liver. Number three, deficiencies. So which one has a higher chance of causing deficiencies? Now that I've just explained it, kindly answer me. Which one, between the fat-soluble vitamins and the water-soluble vitamins, which one do you think causes or poses high chance of causing toxicity in the body and why? That's a question that I'll wait for you guys to answer. Why do you think, which vitamin between the fat-soluble and the water-soluble vitamin do you think has or poses a high risk of causing toxicity? It can destroy the body. Which one do you think and why? It is this simple. If it is retained in the body for long, it means it will accumulate in the body and it will cause you toxicities. If it leaves the body, it means it cannot accumulate in the body unless you have a kidney problem. So water-soluble vitamins, they leave the body through the kidneys and urine. And that means their chances of posing toxicity risk to the body are very minimal because they will be excreted. But for the fat-soluble vitamins, they are stored in the fat cell, they are stored in the liver, they cannot live through urine, and that means they are retained in the body and therefore the toxicity goes up. So understand that. So what are the examples of water-soluble vitamins? 
<laughs> another easy question simply name what are the soluble uh, what are soluble vitamins and what are the fat soluble vitamins for the fat soluble vitamins of course a dec or deca whichever you want to call it those are the just mnemonics but a d e and k those are the fat soluble vitamins you cannot absorb them uh, before they solubilize in fat now when i tell you to eat fatty meat this is what i mean you will not absorb you will actually waste that vegetable or you waste those vitamin sources if you're just eating them and cooking them through uh, with seed oils so you must make sure that for you to absorb them in those vegetables either to dress the vegetables with extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil or cook them using ghee or uh, tallow or those animal and saturated fats so this ade and k have to dissolve in the fat and then they are actually sequestered using the bile and then now they are absorbed in the gut i mentioned bile that tells you some of these not actually some the fat soluble vitamins for you to absorb them you must have one a functional gut that's why i tell you to start fixing the gut number two you cannot absorb them without a functional liver why because the liver and the gall bladder are the ones that produce bile and that bile is coming in to make sure that this fat is soluble so that it can be absorbed and the vitamins follow the fat number three you must have a functional pancreas why because the bile juice comes into the pancreas and then the joins with the pancreatic juice and is released in the small intestines to actually digest the fat so therefore if you have pancreatitis if you have hepatitis if you are an alcoholic if you smoke cigarettes if you are using drugs for diabetes which uh, which destroys the pancreas and one of them is actually uh, of course insulin will cause a destruction of the pancreas because it shuts down the pancreas and number 2 we have this drug called uh, sitagliptin sitagliptin they are called the gliptins they cause pancreatitis so therefore those are the drugs that actually can actually bring problems okay uh, to, to 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 your to your pancreas and therefore you'll have vitamin deficiencies that's why alcoholics have most of these vitamin deficiencies that's why people who have gastritis have deficiencies in vitamins that's why people who consume a lot of wheat are suffering from vitamin deficiencies and of course they will end up needing this that's why people who have uh, uh, gallbladder removed they have vitamin deficiencies and now they are put on supplements so is it creating a business you simply bring a problem and then create a solution in form of supplements what if you don't have a gallbladder now that's the problem but you see a gallbladder just stores the bile the producer of bile is the liver okay so yes you can lack a gallbladder but you still have the bile the problem is do you have a healthy liver by the time you're getting a gallbladder problem chances are high your liver is also going going down the drain and that is a problem so that's why i tell you fix the gut uh, clear the fats from the liver so that heal you heal from the fatty liver that's why i tell you to stop drinking alcohol and eating the wheat and the seed oils that are inflammatory to your pancreas your gut your liver and therefore they'll cause you vitamin deficiencies